I guess we have a fire department kitchen remodel. Uh, I guess one review of the proposals received to date. Excuse me, may I have to make a comment? I'm not open yet, Stephen. Who wants to start this? Uh, I have three bits before you. Two from the IR contractors, one from not. Um, it's just kind of a question of what direction we want to go. Kind of work with John Pope on getting a new kitchen and work on keeping costs down with some uh, other purchasing options, like using a place like IKEA from some of the other uh, cabinet makers, or if we want to go the RFP sealed bid route. Um, which Eric and I can get started on tomorrow if that's the pleasure of the board. I personally feel like i um, worked with this a fair amount of time and I trust John Pope. Uh, he is a registered contractor. He's worked on a number of public works projects. I think that um, with some of the different possibilities of purchasing equipment, cabinets or uh, stoves from directly from other uh, Vendors that we can keep the costs even lower than the fifty-four thousand dollars that it currently is presented. <coughs> Do we have <coughs> the RFP never went out? The RFP has not gone out. It's been tweaked a handful of times. Um, it's like ninety-eight pages. It's a lot of legal. Yeah, I know. I printed the whole thing. Yeah. So if. Uh, Really, it just comes down to whether if you want to use the RFP sealed bidding process, and I find you that with a sharp pencil. So and my we understanding, we have to use it. Um, does anyone on the board have any issues at all if we ask the uh, district manager to speak about the reply we got from the council, which is something we requested at the last meeting? Sure. Anyone have an objection to that? No. Eric, could you give us some details about the response we got from our um, attorney? Sure. Uh, well, I, at the last meeting, I asked him, uh, you know, specifically kind of about, I gave him background on the project, what we were doing, and uh, asked for uh, legal guidance on the informal bidding process that had taken place so far. Um, versus the need to put out an RFP. His opinion is that the district should probably issue an RFP. Probably. Well, the, 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 the district should issue an RFP. Okay. I, I can say that we've done a number of, and I'm not saying past practices sets precedent or is correct, but We've done a number of projects that fall within SBA 54 where we have not used a sealed bidding process. An example? The pickup truck we just bought for the, for the parts department? Yeah, that's not construction, right? It's, I mean, we're, it's a capital purchase. Um, the trailer that the park staff currently use, that didn't go out to a sealed bid. The new air conditioning units that were purchased for, this, for the CSD when the threshold was $1,000 for SB 854, we did not use a sealed bidding process. So this which is so. Was at, which one was over 25,000? No, it was at, at the time of the air conditioning project, it was 1,000. It, it moved to 25,000 within the last six months. So, so are we talking about SB 854 covering any capital purchase or those capital purchases where we have to go out to a vendor? SB 854 covers public works projects. Other capital purchases. The, 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 the code states purchase of materials and supplies for the construction or completion of building structures or improvements. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, questions. It sounds like, um, from an informal standpoint, if you were to accept the bid. Um, we could do. We could start the clock ticking relatively quickly, and hopefully bring this in relatively quickly. Is that true or not true? Um, 60 days. From a clock standpoint, I would agree with you. Okay. All right. 
the RFP, um, if I understand it properly, would go out um, and solicit bids and we reconvene sometime at the end of the next month, okay. end of September, and then um, make a choice at that meeting and then there would be probably some time to figure out when whoever the choice is could start, right? Mm -hmm. So that would probably be a lengthier timeline. Is that also likely? Yes. Okay. So um, there's a third option, and that is we do what we absolutely need to do in order to make sure that the firefighters have a sanitary um, kitchen facility. And in my mind, after having just visited the facility, it's the water wall that really needs to be replaced. The cabinets that are hanging off the wall look like they're serviceable. I don't see any reason for them to have to be replaced. Um, is there any possibility in your mind that we could bring this in with just what we need for less than 25000 and get going? I, I would say that you probably could, but I wouldn't recommend it. Why? You're going to have a hobnob in the kitchen in the firehouse, a building that the community belongs to. I mean, is that how we, would we do the kitchen in the community center? Well, if you're... I'm basically thinking of function over form at this point. No, I, I understand that too, but I mean, we've gone six months. I'm of the opinion if it takes us an extra 30 to 60 days, then we do it right. Well, and right being a complete kitchen that's functional, matching, nice. Throwing away serviceable cabinets and replacing them, correct? Serviceable but old. Go to garage sales to get your stuff. Well, Three appliances. <coughs> but, you know, that is a way to go. Yes. Okay. And if time is an issue, which it has been, um, we've already waited, I think, six months. Correct. Okay. Since this thing um, had to be taken apart, that is an option. So I'm just throwing it out there. Um, I don't want to discount it. Fair enough. And we also have the legal counsel's opinion that we, um, in order to do this right, we should do it by uh, reissuing the RFP, going through the bidding process. I think there are risks on both sides. If I understand the risks, they're, okay, we go ahead with the informal process and we open ourselves up for, for possible litigation. Unknown, but risky, okay? Um, could be as much or more than the cost of the kitchen in the first place. True. Okay. Um, if we follow the rules, we delay. And I understand. And we also risk possibly having, probably having the cost go up and also possibly having somebody who is currently the lowest informal bidder walk away. If, do I understand this right? Yes, I would agree with all those things. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure I understood. No, you're fully versed at this point. You know as much as I do. Anybody else? I think that I, I would just like to see this get moved along as efficiently as possible. Um, I mean, I see the risks and, and the balance. Just speak, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Could you speak up a bit? I mean, I, 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 I would certainly support anything to move this forward as quickly as possible. Um, so I mean, I would prefer not to go out for the RFPs and, you know, take a chance on it, but up to the board. Just, I'm just looking at John Pope's proposal, which is the lowest informal bid we have. And it's sort of interesting. Uh, there's about $7,500 in allowances for, for appliances that we could go out and buy. I assume that John would get a contractor's discount and then add his profit and overhead to that number, which he shows is 15%. I assume if we went out and bought those, maybe we wouldn't get the contractor's discount, but we'd probably come out about the same place. And, and I spoke with John about that. I said, you know, is there any cost savings if we were to buy directly and have them delivered here? And um, he said, he said, really, it's, it's, it's about the same at the end of the day, just because the contractor's discount isn't much. He has a slight markup for his inconvenience and then but the price we're going to get them at is about the same including his market so that was my conclusion yeah. also. but you know in here he has listed a, a six burner range i don't know what the condition is of the range that's in there it's, it's currently a 
three burner range that has six burners. So we, uh, we've been parts have been breaking down on it and you just can't get them anymore. Okay, and the refrigerator, same story? The refrigerator was one that was donated by one of the firefighters about two years ago. Okay. So then it's possible that they'd be here. But uh, I just, I'm, what I'm doing is looking at the, the bid and, and just so there's no uh, confusion, I'm the one that suggested that John contact you. I know him from a project we worked on uh, in Sausalito for the city with him, and I also know him from scouts for years. So uh, there's no conflict. I don't get anything out of this. No, there's no, there's no. I wanted to at least make sure everyone understood that. But if you were to take out the four uh, appliances, and maybe I had a great, in the mail today, I got a great uh, brochure from Ferguson. They have a lot of really fancy stuff in the way of kitchen and bathroom uh, hardware. But uh, there's probably more things that we could, if we were going to do it that way, that we could do to cut John's price down. The other thing that uh, was being suggested is maybe the upper cabinets get left to a subsequent stage so we can get this thing going. But, you know, I'm used to a public agency fully RFP sealed bids for any project over about twenty twenty five thousand dollars. That's my background. And when you were talking originally, you were the goal was to get something for around twenty to twenty five thousand dollars. So that made, it made sense to go out looking for proposals. But uh, even if we were to uh, do some of this ourselves and cut a little down, so maybe we're going to get it down to thirty five thousand dollars. And I'm concerned that a contractor who doesn't do the work says, wait a minute, I never got noticed that this was going out to bid, and I could have done it for less, and so I'm going to sue you for cheating me out of a, the opportunity to have a project. And that, that's my real concern. I, I can tell you that um, I believe Eric, but I know I am prepared to finalize the RFP tomorrow, put it out in the Red Independent Journal, advertising that we're going to issue an RFP because we are required to do that seven days prior and then issue the RFP next Friday. I, I don't mean to first your bubble in fact I have a tentative appointment week for you guys to work on it tomorrow. But there is a huge hole in the RFP that's going to take some considerable work to fill up. If you're talking about materials? Yeah. We've done that. I have that Okay, well it, it isn't in there. I understand it's, that, but I have the information. Oh, okay. I was hoping that uh, you weren't going to have to. I was going to have to do that, but I have the information on materials. Okay. Um, so I'm wondering if you could Don't want to have a 
fire in our own firehouse. Um, and we uh, we would need also a certified plumber of some sort just to have a warranty that, that the work is being done correctly and not have a you know Joe Schmo to kind of you know, come and figure things out. So having said that, we need a, a certified electrician, certified plumber. Uh, we need some kind of cabinetry. We could be getting the appliances ourselves. Um, could could we do it under twenty five thousand dollars? I'm not only paying what we could. Based on what I've seen. I just um, given how prolonged this process has been so far, I would imagine that if we were to take it on, it would take another year before the firefighters have a kitchen, which is unacceptable. So, um, so far we have only received one uh, bid that was under $25,000 and that was by a company that was not DIR registered, therefore could not be doing this work on our premises. Because it's a public works project and because it's a $25,000 or above, in my opinion, it leaves us no choice but to issue an RFP. I don't want to have the district involved in another in another litigation and waste our money on that. Um, it's uh, it's frustrating, but I think at some at this point we really need to go with RFP. Do I want to spend sixty thousand dollars on the kitchen? Absolutely not because I think it's outrageous, it's very wasteful, and I don't, I don't have that money, and I don't want our residents to, I mean, I might be living in a parallel universe, maybe, maybe $60,000 is a going price for a kitchen. Could somebody enlighten me? I mean, I just might be a cheapskate. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little expensive myself. <coughs> so, in my opinion, we are forced to go with an RFP, but it doesn't mean that we're going to award a, a project to a bidder who will come in at $60,000. I just don't want to be spending $60,000 in the kitchen. I'm sorry. Am I the only one? No, you're not the only one. Well, how much are you worth? Willing to pay for please, regular kitchen help please, on the please, other side. please, 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 let I us know. finish. Let us. Well, if I can answer any questions for you, I'm happy to do it. But uh, really, I will follow whatever direction you choose to go tonight and do my best to complete that project. Yeah. Um, question for Eric. Um, if we do in, indeed um, issue this RFP, uh, is this the first RFP we've ever issued as a district? No. Uh, we haven't done one in my time, but they did put out a uh, RFP for the landscape contract. I'm sure it was uh, mm -hmm. a, a tennis courts. Right. Okay. So I think honestly, we've got a precedent of the fact that you know in the past we have actually recognized the need for an RFP, put things out to bid, solicited the bids, got them, and awarded them. Right. Uh, we did not do that in this case. So you know. Yeah, and I would agree with the Chief's earlier statement. I am sure I can find prior projects that they probably should have done that they didn't, be it on uh, ignorance or neglect. I don't know. But, uh, you know, to this point, it's a, certainly a valid point, too. That's what I'm right. Because I think a lot of these things were just capital asset purchases and not construction projects. Right, some of them I think probably on the AC one or something. And again, I would have to look. Um, I don't know what exactly the threshold was at that point in time. The threshold for bidding has always been 25000 The threshold for prevailing wage used to be 1000 I don't know when that changed prior to that. I do know when it changed and moved it to levels of either fifteen or 25000 And to his point, that happened when the state budget was passed less than a month and a half ago. Well, <laughs> I would just simply say, you know, I understand the timing issue and I understand the need to get um, particularly water service back into the firehouse. Um, that's a big one as far as I'm concerned. Um, I, would say, I would suggest we have two options and that is to reduce our specifications and get what's absolutely necessary in there as soon as possible and keep it under 25,000 or we go out with an RFP. 
That would be my suggestion. So a question. Go ahead. Is there, and I don't know, is there any wiggle room by us considering this to be an emergency project? Six months. Yeah, I don't. Well, that's I, why I, I said emergency. I don't think you're going to fly on the emergency project part. I think the mold remediation that the chief was quickly handled, certainly. Um, I don't. I don't consider this necessarily an emergency, and I think that you would have a, a tough sell. Yeah. Okay. We would have a motion to do one of two things. Is that agreed upon? Well, can I have one or the other? <laughs> so I'm asking. But yeah. I go which way. Are you going to say? Given my brothers of those two options, I would prefer to roll with the RFP for a full kitchen. I, I kind of like Jeff's idea of just getting it done. So I also understand that even if we go through the RFP, if we get back $100,000 bids for this kitchen, we're probably not likely not to award it. I mean, Again, that's a poor, poor decision at that point. Yeah, understood. How much work is necessary to get the kitchen up and running? From what I understand, there's electrical upgrades that need to happen irrespective of what else is done. So well, there's clearly the water, upgrades, yeah. the water wall that has to be the sink, the plumbing, the wastewater, all that kind of stuff has to be done. The I think if you were to go your route, you still are going to need a full permitting to do it, uh -huh. at which point they're going to make you bring things up to code, which uh, I don't think that there's faulty electrical. I think that there's probably a lack of electrical over there considering that what it's done and they can throw in a few extra outlets, things like that. That's going to happen with any permitting project. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have to set up an RFP for something like that because it would be under twenty-five thousand. No. If it's under twenty-five, we can just yeah. do it. Just do it. I mean, time right. would dissipate quite rapidly if we did that, and they get something where they can actually you clean up after themselves, clean their products, do whatever they have to do in a sanitary situation. So that that's an idea. Where should we head? Then? I'll open it up to the public. Then. Any ideas, Stephen? Well, I, actually, I have a number of things. So first, first thing I want to address, and I don't know if you had a chance to read uh, what I wrote to you. This does become part of the public record, by the way, because it's in writing. Um, the Brown Act was violated tonight. It was not posted. Uh, in a location that was freely accessible to members of the public. And so any decision you have tonight uh, can be challenged and reversed, okay? Um, what was it posted? This meeting was not posted. It should have been posted it, publicly. It was emailed, right? It was on the website. It was on the website. It was not published in the paper. Yes, it was. When? In the IJ. When? Public. A couple days ago. I think it's either the same. That's, the That's why I'm here tonight, because I read about it in the IJ. Um, get your facts straight for once. Er, I did, I did get my facts straight, and I spoke to the IJ, who may be following up on this, OK? Um, and I also did speak with a lawyer as well. I posted in the FOIA app, too. Is it posted where you post notices or posted someplace else? It's posted where we post notices. Outside the door? No, it's not. Okay. It's, I, I personally I, put it there, Stephen. I know it's there, but that's okay. okay. I photographed it. Okay. I just photographed it tonight. It's not there. Okay. okay. So you have to put it in two places. So, um, but anyhow, that's a kind of a separate subject. Um, yeah, you guys have options, and I'm surprised that after all this time, you don't have a definitive answer. Um, it's very clear that we don't have to do an RFP if it goes under 25000 Now, um, I guess I'm kind of like uh, Isabella. I'm cheap, and I know how to get things done. And I've also worked in the auction business. I've worked with restaurants. I know how they act at their kitchens. And my recommendation is to get freestanding commercial uh, commercial grade stainless 
to put in there. We do not know what the future of the fire department is. Um, it likely is to be merged with another fire department. And if they choose to move the fire uh, station to a different location, then that money that we invested in this luxury kitchen will be all wasted. And uh, even in the preliminary plans that you created, it, it uh, showed that there was uh, the cost for cabinetry is only 4,200 bucks if you get it, you know, the low grade IKEA cabinets. Um, I just think that we need to be spending money on other things, and uh, of course, the I, I don't think we can all agree that the fire department uh, deserves a kitchen, but this was a uh, crisis and a problem that really really did not need to happen. It could have been addressed very quickly. And uh, uh, if you do decide to go with John Pope construction, I think there's question in the public bidding process that you may have already poisoned that relationship. I don't know enough about that to say for certain, but um, also have, having been involved in uh, public bidding, I know that there's very strict ethical requirements concerning contact and that they might have been breached before we do any better. Uh, there was an admission by the chief earlier that we've done a lot of stuff not according to the RFP process and that only makes it worse and um, should this come for review uh, I think there it's very likely that the, it will be thrown out and there'll be costs to the district that really shouldn't have to happen. So I urge you to think like it's your money that's being spent, not government money because it belongs to all of us, and do the right thing. If you need specific, uh, if you need specific uh, quotes for commercial equipment, I can probably find something for you, but I. From what I understand, you didn't even pursue that option because I guess you don't like stainless steel. So, thank you, Steve. Anybody else? Gabrielle? Um, have you already, did you already have an estimate of how much it would cost to do the repairs without an RFP? Not the repairs itself, what we were talking about, right? Okay. Not what uh, was brought up tonight, you know. So there's no estimate at this point of how much. So you don't even know if you can do it for 25,000 or 125, correct? Well, five months ago we could have done it for 25,000. There was there was one bid that was submitted um, under 25,000 dollars, but it was um, at that point violating uh, the law that uh, required public entities to have. Uh, all work performed at a prevailing wage rate. True. Um, excuse me, Linda, I'm just not even answering your question, so can you please not interrupt me? Um, so that's the reason we were not able to go with the kitchen removal for under 25,000. And they were registered. But now they were not at the IR registered because they could not guarantee that all the work would be performed <coughs> at a prevailing wage. So let's change now. Um, the, You've been educated. So, um, at that, when we received that bid, the threshold was one thousand dollars. Successfully, uh, um, subsequently, sorry, it was raised to twenty-five thousand. At which point, we were like, "Great, let's go with this company." That company backed up. Was that John Pope Construction? No, it was a different. Okay. The reason I'm asking. <coughs> I know a number of contractors. I work for Marine Builders Association, and I, I'm i wondering, I mean, with all the names of contractors that I know, if I could hopefully help to bring in a lower bid, might be possible. John Pope is one of our members, um, and I'm just thinking, I don't have any idea how big the kitchen is or what it costs to redo a kitchen. But if you could do it for under 25000 that would be the way to go. And then is there an option 
if that's impossible to do, to then do an RFP. I think the only drawback, it's absolutely reasonable and I understand what you're saying. I think the only drawback is that it further delays the, um, the, the, process. the process. But it is, it is a good idea. I mean, I, I was thinking actually like with all the people in the community, why not reach out and say, you know, can you make it happen under 25? We, we alone probably have about 100 contractors that we can call in our, in our association. I, I, so I there's, there's a lot of people out there that would be able to do the job. I thought I recall that either Eric or she talked to the Rim Builders Association about looking for some names of contractors. I just went on their website and started calling contractors one day and they were looking for about 10 names. Um, Guys are busy. No one was really interested. It is hard um, because they are busy. I talked to Thompson true. Builders, who was going to have one of their guys maybe do it as a side job, and it never <laughs> came down. So um, it was it was tough. Thompson's yeah. huge, and yeah. they and that might m make a difference. Maybe some of the smaller, more hungry contractors could fit it in. I don't know, or some of the bigger ones that do have some more flexibility so it, it would be hard but it it's not impossible and there's a lot of people to call reputable people is there a way for you to contact them and then you know, well, i can put out a notice tomorrow specs, but they have to be dir registered too right um and the little guy I can tell you no that. i can put out a i can put out a notice without specs just saying uh the Marinwood Fire Department is seeking this information. Uh, please give them a call and put your phone number in there and they could give you a call. To clarify, they'd have to be DIR if it's over 25. Right. Mm -hmm. I could under, put that in there. To keep it under, we're going to have to change the specifications. I, I don't think there's any way around that. Oh, no, absolutely. If I want to keep it under 25,000, mm -hmm. so it's a third of the kitchen. Right. Correct. I tend to agree with you. I recently did my kitchen a pretty extensive what it costs. Linda. Yeah, um, one thing, I, I don't know if, if dish um, garbage disposal is listed. I know this is um, going to be $1,000 or $500 or whatever, but I was looking through some of these and hopes I don't think had garbage disposal on it. So you want my old one? Anybody? I just wondered if you wanted to add well, garbage disposal. When, when, when and if we meet tomorrow, there's some inconsistencies between what John has and unless he's saying he's going to follow the plans, I believe the plans show a garbage disposal. And maybe that's part of the accessories allowance or something. Yeah. We're but there's some garbage disposal of $60, people. We are way in the weeds at this point. Mm -hmm. Well, the other, the other thing is, um, I don't believe you can buy a commercial dishwasher for $500. I and don't think it's commercial. We keep buying regular old dishwashers and replacing them every five or six years. These firemen wash dishes every single day. It's not like my house where I wash them once or once or twice a month. Because I just don't. Okay, but these dishwashers have been replaced four or five times. So, in any case, that's another consideration. You do not have a commercial uh, dishwasher listed. But one of the things I was going to say is, if you're willing to spend 80 grand for the park and rec three buildings, actually one building for a few trucks, one building for uh, doing work, maintenance, and another little fencing area to store stuff, that's basically what the maintenance building is. It's three sections, and you're willing to spend 80 grand. Why are you being so cheap with the fire department? I would never want to live in a place. I mean, my kitchen is 25 years old. When I put my kitchen in, I refaced. Cheap, 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 refaced. Got the cheapest appliances, refaced. It was $20,000. That was the cheapest I could find. 25 years ago. You should have taken my offer of money 
to pay for this four months ago. It would have been in and done. I think you're doing a disservice. This fire station is going to stay here forever. We have thousands of people that need the fire department right where it is. The fire department's not gonna move. And I don't think the county would let it move. We need this right in this area. So as far as I'm concerned, you ought to, you shouldn't put in something that's slipshod. Oh, well, we could go to a garage sale and get some tables and countertops and old stoves and, and uh, there's a garbage disposal for sale right now. Actually for free, I think, uh, next door. Why don't you do that? What are you trying to do to our firefighters? Are you trying to make them live in a slum? Do you want everything to keep breaking down every couple of years? Oh, okay, we're gonna have old cabinets and gee, five years from now they might all fall off the walls. We're gonna have a uh, non-commercial dishwasher five more years, we're gonna have to buy a new one. We're gonna get a next door garbage disposal. We're gonna get, okay, you understand what I'm saying? Ranting is okay, Linda. I'm not ranting. What I'm trying to do is a logical. When you are being logical, you look at the whole picture. You don't look at individual pieces that you could just throw in. Okay, anybody else? Bobby? I just wanted to uh, chime in my two cents. Um, you, know, you guys are really proud of the community center that you have here and the fire department and the history of it. And the decisions you make reflect your uh, outcomes. And I think whether it's the CSD building or the fire department or the parks, the decisions that you make are going to be reflected to the community. And I think it's the the, in this case, the firehouse, these guys have already gone six months without a, a kitchen, and I know there's been a little rumbling and stuff like that, but, I mean, if that was at your own home, your, your spouse or significant other would, you know, be ch choking you by now. And, um, you know, I think the patients are, are beyond that. Whether you want to piece something together, I think the, the bottom line is, is that you want to be able to have a functioning kitchen, something that's reflective of your decision, your community, and um, is, is, you know, if you get into a price, you, even when you go to an RFP, which at this moment I would say, I hope you go to an RFP, but at the back end of it, it sounds like if it's over $100,000 or over 60, you're not gonna be doing anything, so you're gonna be spinning around again and we'll be probably a year at this. So I just would like to see you go to an RFP, put it out there, get a professional in here and go to work on a kitchen. I think it's, the, 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 these guys deserve it, the community deserves it. Thank you. I think the most logical and fastest way to deal with this problem based on where we are today is to go with an RFP uh, the one thing that I thought was going to be time consuming, apparently we have. Uh, I'm suggesting that we put in this RFP a number of allowances or alternatives that give us a place to cut if we really have to based on the bids we get. And, and move on. Okay. Or in the alternative, we could notice this for a meeting next month as Stephen suggests and not do anything for a month. Um, Eric, is, is there a way to, for us to open some room in, in terms of um, what kind of work we do, not only in the specs, but also in just lowering overall price of the um, RFP? Because I would, um, like, why wouldn't we just go with RFP that specifies, let's say, Thirty-five thousand to forty thousand dollars uh, price cap. I don't understand. There's no price in the RFP till there the is contractor a, comes back. No, but there is an estimate that we are kind of noting in the RFP. That well, we can put a five thousand dollar estimate. Hope they really get <coughs> low. I think what, what I'm trying to say. I think what she's trying to say is that you don't specify top end materials. You specify materials that are are basic but will wear well and last for a long time. And we, like A, B, we don't need commercial grade anything. We, I think we need a good quality refrigerator, stove and whatnot, but it's not a place that serves food and sells, it's not a place that sells food, so we don't need a commercial grade anything. We need 
good serviceable um, quality items but um, just the again in addition to um, saying you know let's let's not put a whatever the fancy brand of dishwashers for the, I don't know, let's say GE, whatever the you know, good quality thing is. Um, but also in addition to that, on the suggested price or su suggested range, you know, kind of give the contractor a, a ballpark of where, we, where are we aiming. So a person who is going to submit RFP for $125,000 doesn't even bother because that's not really what Well, we're that's doing. the whole purpose of the estimate. Is to let the big guys, if it's a big number, bid on it, and the little guys don't, and vice versa. Um, and that's the only reason for the estimate is to let the contractors know what's kind of expected, so they know whether it's worth their trouble or not so to, that's, to bid that's on it. Actually, what I mean. That's what, but we could have alternatives, like as an example, we could say in the base bid it's a granite countertop, but as an alternate, you have a formica countertop, and if, if push comes to shove there's a place to go to a less expensive item. I'm not saying that's a good example, but it's an example. Yeah. Right? Yes. Anybody else? Uh, Jim, why can't you do this in phases? Do the electrical and plumbing right away. Get that done. And then do phase two. And then phase three. But get something started right away. If the infrastructure is part of the problem, do that first. You got plumbing. Pro you know, I'm not familiar with you know uh, everything, but you mentioned there's a plumbing problem. Well, get the plumbing problem done. That's not going to be twenty-five thousand. And then get whatever electrical you need, and then do a separate project later on. I don't know why you can't do the infrastructure stuff uh, right away by itself. It's got to be done anyway. Make it a separate project. Well, I know from a from a legal standpoint. Um, SBA 54 has a clause in it that essentially speaks to trying to carve up or phases in order to keep them within, within the $25,000 limit. So that would probably get caught. Um, but I mean, it's a great suggestion. I'd, I'd love to see it done too. But um, I believe that there's a clause in there that restricts that. Well, I think President Trump was going to take care of that. Well, right after the well, we're sorry, but we're in California. Yeah. Exactly. It has nothing it's to part do with the United, United States. States. <laughs> <laughs> Still, yeah. Uh, anything well, else? I do have one little bit. Um, I want to go back to Park and Rec Commission meeting where the subject was the kitchen here in the community center. We're not talking about that. I, that's only house. the beginning of my sentence. Okay. Will you please listen to the end of my sentence? Thank you. I'm thinking that, I, I know 100% for sure, that Isabella, when she was on the commission, wanted a commercial uh, stove. Now, why, you just said no commercial, any, no, any commercial appliances, none whatsoever. So you've changed your mind or you're distinguishing between one side of the building getting commercial appliances and the other side of the building not. And it does not make sense to me that you would just come right out and say no commercial anything. Well, there are many things that you say don't make any sense for me, but um, the reason, um, well, let me put it this way. Originally, I said because we are renting this kitchen together with the hall, for weddings, receptions, and it generates the community center as zillions of dollars annually. Um, I wanted it to be in a good shape, as you know. Also, Jesus, uh, uh, what's her name now? Um, Kimberly uh, suggested that uh, we could rent out the kitchen to uh, re to resident bakers and uh, cooks who could. What, let me finish now. I'll let you finish, right? So, um, and also Shane was at this meeting as well and um, enlightened all of us to the cost of changing the kitchen from a non-commercial to a commercial grade kitchen to the cost that it would involve. 
And I did not follow this idea any longer, given the fact that it was so expensive, so prohibitively expensive. So did this uh, thought come up? Yes, but maybe you didn't listen very carefully, because later on, I did not follow through on that. Therefore, I am not distinguishing between one house of uh, one side of the house and the other side of the Thank house um, based on whatever you think I'm doing. Um, the truth of the matter is the firefighters, that's their workplace. That's not their house, that's their workplace. Yes. Okay? So comparing this kitchen to a house kitchen, it's a stretch in my opinion. Um, However, they do deserve a functioning kitchen in a good shape, and um, I agree with that. This side of the house, keep in mind, is a gener revenue generating uh, side of the house, and that's why we also should be keeping this side of the house in, in good shape and in a working order. Mm -hmm. that's all. Go ahead, Russ. It seems like. Uh, this is just taking way too long, but in defense of the chief and the city manager, they've both done a great job. The first month in, they were ready to go. But in the uh, under 25,000, now it seems like we're at a crossroads where it's either under or over. Uh, my only suggestion, if it's over, I heard the number $4,200 for cabinets. My suggestion is you don't go bargain basement cabinets because you're going to be replacing them before you know it. Uh, we don't have to have luxury equipment. I think that that's an incorrect word for what we need in the kitchen. I think it has to be a substantial set of cabinets. Don't get particle board when you can get plywood. It doesn't have to be fancy. It's a firehouse, but it has to be done right. The other thing is if we have to go over, it might be better for the contractor to replace them all. And I know Jeff came out and said, let's try to keep the ones that are in good shape. But there's always need for storage around the firehouse. You can always mount a mouth and floor somewhere for additional equipment. It always will come in handy. Don't get rid of them. Recycle them. Keep them in house. Those are, if you look at the ones that are in there, they're very substantial. They'll last another 20 years. So it might be better for the contractor just to gut and go. It's a lot easier in the long run. So those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? See yeah. Um, well, I, I feel like I, I made the suggestion numerous times and never heard a response back from everybody. But I, first of all, I do agree with Russ. We don't want something like chipboard in there. We need something more substantial. And that's why, to my experience, you go with a commercial grade stainless steel units. They come in two feet, four feet, six feet, 10 feet. You can get, you basically, Within a week, you can buy all your cabinetry, set it up, and it, it's really, this is what you see in most community centers, you see it in most churches, and the reason is it's, it's a good investment. Um, I don't know. Maybe you want to win design awards. I have no idea, but I don't think anyone really cares. Um, and two, I, I just want to uh, strengthen Isabella's point, you know, uh, we, 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 like our fire department, we've got, what, three to four guys on duty at any one time using that kitchen. That is actually equivalent to a family around here. So let's not overthink this. This is not, you know, we want to set them up with something nice, but it doesn't have to be, you know, bulletproof. It's got to be just good quality. Um, I would strongly recommend that you get a, uh, a restaurant equipment salesman in here to give you some quotes and uh, and at least have that in your pocket as one of your options. Yes. I'm just looking at the clock and I'm kind of astounded that we've spent 50 minutes talking about the process. About all the cooks in the kitchen. All the cooks, yeah, there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen. And she just beat me to it. <laughs> I'm in the middle of a construction project myself, and I really appreciate and I'm grateful for having a contractor and somebody who knows more than me who brings in professional people. And, you know, they spec'd out things, and the only reason I questioned them is because I wanted prettier things. So on my dime, I had my office manager and my designer going out to shop for various things to make it pretty. 
but I don't think that the Board of Community needs to get into the level of detail of what kind of refrigerator is there. I mean, leave it up to the contractor, leave it up to the chief. This is just, I think we're getting really deep in the weeds here. I think um, I would just like to suggest we need to direct um, staff to issue the RFP. Is that our job tonight? Do we I think questions? that's, we're gonna choose either the proposals, one of the proposals, or direct the staff to do the RFP. I'm basically here, and I think that's where we're going to have to head. Anybody disagree? Could I have a motion? No, go ahead. I'll second the you. I don't know if you will. <laughs> um, I would like to make a motion to authorize the uh, district manager to issue an RFP for the kitchen reconstruction with a uh, um, suggested um, range of uh, $40,000. Range of what? A, a suggested price tag of a uh, range, I mean, for which to shoot of forty thousand dollars. To what's the other end of the range? That's the range a is that's a maximum limit. budget. Is what that's a limit. Saying. Yeah, it's a limit, not a range. So uh, we did put a number in the current budget for this, correct? Eric? It's sixty thousand. Okay. Is forty a reasonable number? Based on the information that I have received back, I would say no. And I agree. Mm -hmm. Do we need to put in a number? I think maybe we should just leave a number out because these bids are going to go come high, come low. Be well, better. or they might not come at all if you don't you specify what you're expecting to spend. Yeah. In other words, th this is part of the winnowing process, is it not? By putting in a limit, you're basically saying to the community of developers, do you want to bid on this or do you not want to bid on this? Isn't that what you said earlier? That's sort of, yeah. yeah. So I would say, you know, putting a limit in there is probably a good thing to do, but I would not, I don't think $40,000 is going to fly. I mean, I think 60, if we have 60 in the budget. Since there was no second, let me try one. Okay, okay, go ahead. That we direct staff to move ahead with an RFP for the kitchen remodel with the goal being to create a functional and serviceable kitchen. Now, let me explain that. Uh, with input yeah. with your help. Oh, with I, your I, oh yeah, we already have a point set up tomorrow. Okay, so is that the whole motion then? Yes, serviceable that, that's the motion. Yes. Do I hear a second? second? And there is no price point at all. I think, at least I sure have heard loud and clear what our goal is. And looking at the plans, I see some things that could be adjusted to reduce it. And the, my concern with the maximum was that uh, we haven't, uh, at least I haven't decided whether we ought to have allowances for things, let the contractor put those numbers in, and maybe we can do better on some of the appliances or whatever. But I don't know that we can. But I just want that ability, and all we have to do is write the word allowance for the, like say, the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Do you have to put that in the RFP that we're going to do some of the work? We're not doing any work. We're we're may buy some, we may buy some of the appliances. Well, that's work. Who's going to buy them? You? <coughs> Me? Next to our website? We have a motion on the table, is yes, that correct? We do. I'd like to second that motion. It was already seconded, sorry. But I, got oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't even. Who? Me, yeah. Oh, no wonder, I can't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> may, I a, may I make a quick comment? So, can you repeat Hold. the motion? Verbatim, please. Verbatim? Um, um, an RFP. We're, we're directing staff to go out to go out, put out an RFP for a functional, functional serviceable kitchen. Is that the gist? That's it. Yeah. That's it. Excuse me. Can I just make a quick comment? Um, I don't know what the requirements are. There was a discussion of commercial versus non-commercial. I don't know if this facility has commercial coding requirements. It does not. It doesn't? No. Okay. So there would be a venting system involved if you, you have any of that. So you really can't put, Linda, you really can't put in uh, commercial appliances uh, unless you... You can. 
Well, you can if you spend the money. But, but it, we're not permitted to be a commercial kitchen. You don't have to meet commercial. Okay. I just want to make sure that commercial permitting standards. There's a difference between what you're saying and what she's saying. Okay. I just want to make sure that it's was that kind of understood. Yeah. Anybody else want to chime in? I heard the motion and seconded. I call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I would like my number. Nick? Nick. That's it. We have four to Can I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, guys.